Governor and I had the opportunity to see uh, some of the scientists that are right now uh, working very furiously uh, to make a vaccine. And they're not only working on discovering the vaccine, but once they do, they'll be able to manufacture that vaccine here, which is uh, so important. We've learned that there are some important steps that everybody in Connecticut can take to keep themselves healthy. And that is, if you haven't gotten a flu vaccine, get one right now because that will help decrease the burden on our hospitals and healthcare uh, facilities. It won't protect you against uh, COVID-19, but it will reduce the number of people that are going, that are getting sick and going to uh, hospitals and healthcare facilities. Uh, but you can also uh, hear from uh, some of the folks from Sanofi, but they do believe that getting a flu shot could also help you if you should happen uh, to get the COVID virus. Um, so now it's uh, my pleasure to introduce our governor, Governor Lamont. Thank you, Susan. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thanks for the amazing work you're doing, Protein Sciences, and the tour. And I'll start where uh, Susan left off. Get your flu vaccine. Uh, right now, uh, we are worried about our emergency rooms. They potentially could be overrun. We want to make sure that those folks who are the most serious with COVID-19 are the ones that uh, get first in line. And secondly, it was explained to me, if you get your flu vaccine, if you don't contract the flu, you're a little uh, safer in terms of COVID-19. If you uh, don't, if you do uh, contract just the traditional flu, that makes you a little more vulnerable to COVID-19. So I know there's a little trepidation in the Capitol about who should get vaccinated and not. This is a, a building that's devoted their lives to protecting people's lives through safe vaccines. Protein Sciences is an amazing company. It's part of the healthcare, life sciences, biosciences ecosystem that makes Connecticut unique. And if uh, we can't get this COVID-19 thing right, uh, nobody can. Uh, uh, Protein Sciences, as you know, they're on the front line on SARS. Uh, and, and developed um, a vaccine, worked on that. They were the front line of uh, some of our early flu vaccines, especially those with severe respiratory uh, issues. So they're ideally suited, which is why the federal government uh, uh, granted them, as well as uh, a couple of others, to take the lead on developing a COVID-19 vaccine. Look, you can't rush these things. I, I know that we all think, oh boy, maybe this is gonna save the day for us. Um, this um, COVID-19 is expanding very quickly. It's highly infectious. And we are close to one of the um, hot zones, epicenters out of Westchester County, coming right up through Fairfield County. We had another case that we reported down at Stanford just in the last uh, couple of hours. But that doesn't mean that we're not working together in terms of our life sciences ecosystem. You know, down there in Greenwich, down in Stanford, uh, right now our hospital systems are coming up with the fever clinics. Those fever clinics are, um, you know, outside tent facilities. So if you feel like you maybe have um, uh, some of the conditions that may remind you of COVID-19 at this point, go to your doctor, get a permission, and then go to one of these clinics. Fortunately, you won't have to go into the emergency room, which causes um, issues on both sides in terms of contamination. And uh, very soon, we're going to be able to do more and more of these uh, drive-through testing. That leads us to what we do. How do we, we can collect the samples. What do we do for testing? As you know, there's been a great deal of um, conversation about how slow the federal government has been in getting us the testing capacity we need. We've doubled our testing capacity here in the state of Connecticut over the last uh, few days, uh, but that's not enough. We are working with a lot of local providers as well as out-of-state providers to greatly increase our ability to, once you get that swab, tell you within uh, four, five, six hours whether you have COVID-19 or not. And we're working with some of our amazing um, uh, hospital system providers right here. We're, we hope to be able to offer that testing, not just the collection, but the testing uh, within a week or so. That's incredibly important. 
But that takes me back to uh, protein sciences. Uh, one of these companies, a Connecticut company, a Connecticut, this, uh, a company that's been making a difference in terms of vaccinations in flu-like things uh, over many years, influenza, I mentioned SARS, and the traditional flus. This is the type of company that gives us the best hope. We don't know what the life cycle is of COVID-19. You know, is it an eight, nine week thing like traditional flu, then maybe it goes away? Or does it go dormant and potentially come back again in a year or in six months after the uh, summer season? That means uh, the idea of um, their vaccination, if and when it comes, could be incredibly timely end of this year, early next year. So I just want to say to all the folks at Protein Science, thanks for what you're doing. I appreciate your working in collaboration with the rest of the healthcare and life sciences ecosystem. And uh, Susan, as Lieutenant Governor, I as Governor, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you're successful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Governor, can you talk about um, what Connecticut is doing as far as not having people rush to the hospital? That seems to be a big message now, what's happened in Europe, uh, that inundated hospitals and having that as, as serious as this is. There are a lot of people who get Connecticut COVID. citizens have been very thoughtful about this. They have not rushed the hospitals. Look, if you feel like you may have the comings on of a flu, I don't know whether it's COVID-19 or traditional flu, stay home. Uh, that's what we'll recommend to you, um, whatever um, the diagnosis ends up being. Stay home, call your doctor. Doctor will determine when and if you want to come in uh, for that test. And we are ramping up those tests. One of the reasons is importance, so we know um, when people are circulating around who's at risk and who's not. I'd like to think about tests prioritizing folks in daycare. Think about folks in our hospitals, oh, folks in the front line, elderly, as Susan say, because they're most at risk. Uh, but my basic uh, message to each and every one of you, if you feel something coming, shortness of breath, fever, um, probably, not probably, stay at home. Can you have a question? comment on the economic impact now that the travel ban is locked in? You know, the president announced uh, Connecticut companies now are, are faced with some uh, serious decisions. Uh, and one company also said we can maybe put $5 million now because they can't sell tickets to events. Uh, are you going to give loans? Is that something? The question is uh, the economic impact of, uh, of this um, pandemic. And we're working very closely with our federal delegation. You heard the president's speech yesterday. There are going to be uh, SBA, small business loans, which I think will act as some sort of a bridge, which is helpful. We're working on um, unemployment compensation, unemployment compensation plan would allow those, maybe those um, hourly folks who otherwise might not take 14 days off if they have to self-quarantine, if they're worried, worried about taking care of their family. I think that would be part of our package as well. We're working uh, in terms of daycare, just in case other school systems close, mom or dad has to stay home, or if they have to work, maybe they work in a life sciences healthcare provider, make sure that there's daycare facilities for them. And I'm not sitting around waiting for the federal government, because I, I never know what's going to happen out of there. We're hoping uh, to God that they act and act on this quickly. But in the meantime, we're putting forward a package, working with the legislature so we can get going. Governor, can you elaborate can more on the state of campus? Can you say last few questions about the protein sciences people who are there? Absolutely. Yeah, come on up. Sure. And, and while they're coming up, I'll just say there uh, was a provision in the bonding package that was passed yesterday uh, for uh, COVID-19 related expenses. Look, we've got community transmission right now, and I think that community transmission is bigger than New Rochelle. I think only because of testing, we don't know how extensive it is in New York City, not to mention uh, Southern Connecticut. So time may be passed on that, but we certainly are saying in those places that look like they have the highest incident, like Westchester County, like Fairfield County, anybody with any symptoms at all, stay at home. I have a question. Do you have plans for one of the sciences? Sure. I, I'd be, a couple, two, about two weeks ago, Why don't hey, they guys, come right up to the You better answer the scientific so, yeah. question, or I might. You don't want that. So, Clem, you and I talked on the phone a couple of weeks ago, and you had mentioned to me that this vaccine might be likened to the flu within the next 36 to 48 months. We now know that there's a lot of pressure on vaccine developers to accelerate this process. Um, we've heard from the FDA about a possible emergency use authorization might skip the animal testing or straight to human trials. So can you talk about some of the ways that we might be able to accelerate the process 
uh, all I can say is that we're working extremely hard to uh, develop this vaccine as quickly and fast as possible. We understand the, the public health emergency and the team, as you heard from the governor, is working on this project. It's, it's not business as usual for us. We are working as hard as possible and we are evaluating all um, ways of accelerating development and working closely with the regulatory authorities to do that. Um, that that's something that uh, we, as I said, we are looking at all ways to evaluate and uh, to accelerate the um, the development and in close contact with the regulatory authorities. Is there anything that the federal government can do to help you with that acceleration? We're working very closely with the federal government, um, with our partners, BARDA, with other federal agencies, and um, FDA on. On this program, we always uh, vaccines are, are usually a public-private partnership, and that is serving us well because we were already uh, in contact and have always been working with them. Just like we were able to get uh, an agreement with BARDA to start this program in less than 10 days, um, that's continued. So the sense of urgency is felt. We're accelerating, and we are working all together to um, come up with a solution. Um, as I said, the situation is very fluid, so I would prefer not to uh, comment on that. All I can say is we recognize it's a public health emergency and we are working as quickly as possible to get a vaccine out to people. And what we believe that um, we told the governor is we uh, have the, the process that we use is what we use to make flu vaccine, and therefore um, we have a process that can be used at scale and once the vaccine is available, we can move into large-scale production right away. If this virus mutates, will you have to start from zero again, or is there a way that you can overcome that? Um, again, that's sort of a hypothetical question. What I would say is what we know today is this, the types of virus circulating, the spike protein, there's a uh, are similar, there's high degree of homology, they, we have not seen that change. This doesn't appear to be like influenza. So for COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 as it's known, we think that that's not, um, we, you know, one can never say, but that's not our, our thought at the moment. We don't believe, to be clear, that this would be a vaccine that would work against SARS or MERS, a, a totally different coronavirus strain. How many people working here are devoted to COVID-19? I will. We have, uh, we have 100 people working in Meriden approximately, and they work in different parts of the process. Um, the, the development of the vaccine goes to stages, so, as, so not everybody can work at the same time. So the people that need to work on the stage that the development is, they are, being, uh, they are working on it. And would it be manufactured? We are looking, and as Glenn mentioned, we are working with the authorities to find what is the best way to move as fast as possible with the clinical trials and then with the manufacturing. We will have to see how, what is the best alignment. Once you do go into manufacturing, how many doses can you get out there in how short a time? It's too early. We think we can do between 100 and 600 uh, million doses at one point. Uh, it will depend on the yield and, and other and other is the infrastructure is there. It depends how we align with the with the authorities, with the FDA, et cetera. So I know we're talking about vaccines here, but uh, how close are we to at least getting a specific antiviral to fit for the treatment? Um, that's not my area of expertise. Okay. I, I don't. I don't think I, I, it would be helpful if I speculated on that. Thank you. That was a great question. Yeah, we have worked uh, closely with insurance carriers. There's going to be a no cost related to, for any of their testing. Working with our head of DSS to make sure our folks on uh, Medicaid, there's no cost of testing. And uh, working with the legislature to make sure that anybody who's uninsured, there'll be no cost for testing. Well, that's a decision we still got to make. Capacity double for flu vaccine tests or for flu tests. What, what is 
in our capacity? And where can people go to get the flu shot if healthcare providers and drug stores are reporting they don't have the regular flu vaccine? Well, two different questions. Maybe you know more about uh, accessibility of the flu vaccine, but I think that should be readily available. You know, we started out on a very limited basis in terms of our testing capacity. We were one of the first state labs to get that. Went from 25 to, say, 50 or 60 tests we can do right now. We're now working with some outside providers. Um, I'm told that the Greenwich swabs are going to an out-of-state lab. So that's increasing our capacity even further. And I'm hoping we're going to have more locally input, local hospitals able to do testing in just a few days. And people should call 211 because there is a dedicated line to deal with questions regarding COVID. So over the next few days, uh, right. when there are answers about testing labs and all of that, that's the place to call. Thank you, everybody.